So this video is an introduction to lean production, but we're going to start by talking about modern manufacturing. Okay, so let's first talk about why manufacturing. So if you just look at the United States economy, um, they contribute 2.09 trillion to the economy. Uh, for the last year data was available. This figure has steadily risen since 2009 when manufacturers contributed 1.73. It's 12% of our GDP gross domestic prop, uh, profit. So for every dollar spent in manufacturing, another 137 is added to the economy. So it has the highest multiplier effect of any economic sector. Um, there are greater than 17 million jobs in the U.S. And so about 9-10% of our workforce is directly employed. Um, another large fraction indirectly employed, okay? So in 2013, the average manufacturing worker in the U.S. earned over $77,000 annually. That includes their pay and benefits. However, if you look at other industries overall, it's only a little over 62,000. So this is a um, pretty large increase, and this is a good number, All right? So why do we do manufacturing in South Carolina? In South Carolina, it's 16.3% of the total output of our state. It employs almost 11% of our workforce. Um, it's $28.7 billion in 2012, All right? And the compensation for people employed in manufacturing is about $30,000 higher than other non-farm non, non employers in the state, right? That um, category is excluded from these numbers, all right? So if you just look at these numbers, you can see the total number of people who are employed, okay, and the percentage that is, and look what that annual average compensation is 65.5, okay, versus 35,000 otherwise. So this gives us a $30,000 pay premium to be in manufacturing, right? Um, it's, when you look at the share of our state's exports, right, it's 97%. We have almost 5,000 manufacturing establishments, facilities. All right, so mass production, let's talk about that. One of a kind has a very long history. That happened for a very long period of time. Volume production has a very short history. We're really talking about the early 1900s. So just a little over 100 years. All right, so mass production is a system where the more goods are produced, the lower the cost of the goods. That's called economies of scale. All right, so, you know, prior to that, everything was one of a kind, one of a kind. It was done by artisans. It was handmade, right? Then the Industrial Revolution happened in England in the 1750s. So there were high volumes of textiles and metal goods being manufactured then, but there were no interchangeable parts. Then what happens is Eli Whitney comes along, and he has the idea of interchangeable parts. So we think, oh, Eli Whitney, the cotton gin, right? But he has this idea about interchangeable parts for muskets in the War of 1812, he invented the first mill, actually, as well. Um, but the interchangeable parts he actually manufactured weren't really interchangeable, um, and they actually had to be hand-fit by skilled artisans and skilled workers. So while he had this great idea, he couldn't actually execute it. The other revolutionary idea he had, though, was that factory workers should be treated with respect. This was a very novel concept and is his most significant contribution, that factory workers should be treated with respect. Um, what I want you to know is that volume production is not mass production. Mass production, you get economies of scale. These people doing the volume production in the early Industrial Revolution had volume production, but not mass production. They didn't take advantage of economies of scale. Okay, so then in we have the first ideas of mass production. So the role of the worker here, there are two roles. There's a semi-skilled worker and a skilled worker. So semi-skilled workers were paid less and they did the make, make and assemble. 
The skilled workers, they make more, and they do the setup and maintenance of the machines, all right? So true mass production, unlike Eli Whitney's interchangeable musket parts, does not rely on fitters, all right? So as we start looking at this, Ford, in 1914, really begins to mass produce the Model T on his now famous moving assembly line. And he reduced his direct cost by 88%. He revolutionized manufacturing. The workers had high earnings. You saw in the video you watched last week that there were some inherent problems with this as well, but that there was, in fact, this higher earning potential, right? But Ford's system had some failings. There were changeover issues, and it was slow, meaning Ford could not identify that at some point he wasn't going to want to make Model Ts all day, every day. And so when they needed to change to something else or something in the design changed, he couldn't change it. His process and assembly line couldn't adapt. General Motors kind of revolutionized manufacturing um, in that he created a manufacturing system that could accommodate product changeovers, even eventually what became the annual model changes in vehicles. Um, he also understood the importance of understanding your customer. So his idea in this understanding your customer was that, you know, not everybody would want an identical vehicle. There were a lot of different kinds of customers there. And so they would want different types of vehicles, different types and function. Um, so that idea was very revolutionary. I mean, uh, one of the examples of where Ford's system failed is his system could not adapt when people wanted a window that rolled down. Um, and that caused a major problem for them. So what happened in the United States is we took Ford's ideas on the assembly line, combined them with Sloan's ideas on customer, understanding your customer, and that led the United States to dominate um, mass production from World War I all the way through um, the mid-1970s. What happens in the mid-1970s is the Toyota production system begins to emerge. All right, so um, we'll follow up with that in the next video.